Hey, what's up everybody? This is the Rabbit Hedgehog and this is going to be my ride and review the 2019 Suzuki Bergman 400 scooter. Now this is completely different than what I normally try to do because, well let's face it, somebody asked me if I can do a maxi scooter and you know what? Let's do it! Why not? Sorry, they literally just built these like a day ago so there's some things that we're still looking at here so anyway right, so down here we have ourselves trip a trip b regular odometer and then we have our um, fuel gauge we also have 92 degree fahrenheit for outdoor temperature i think <laughs> might be engine temperature we'll find out here in a moment i don't think it's 92 out here right now of course you have this is going to be weird this is front this is rear brake there is no no uh, clutch here. It is all sorts of wrong. <laughs> but you know what? Let's try this out. <laughs> wow, I literally just put my foot down to try to break this thing. <laughs> This is weird. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So, this is uh, exactly like sitting at your kitchen table on your chair here. You got your feet out in front of you, oddly. You're sitting down with your knees bent, and uh, this feels weird. I mean, I've rode ruckuses before, but it's always a weird sensation because of I normally come from a saddle seat. So, yeah. This is so weird trying to figure out how to modulate these brakes at the moment because I'm trying to remember the left is my front brake and it grabs quite nicely I might add. And the right side is the back brake so kind of getting used to modulating that with my hands instead of feet and hands. So that's interesting. And you got this park brake down here too now. <laughs> takes a second to get off the line probably because it's got to spin up a little bit here. Oh, that's going to be outdoor temperature, I'm going to guess. It's got a little eco light on it. It's got a little, got a little cold temperature light. It's also got your bright and it looks like something a jar. <laughs> can't see what that says. I think it's a fuel door jar light or something. Or can't tell. <laughs> Of course, your turn signal lights and everything down there with your analog tachometer and speedometer. Sorry, it's really hard to see down in there. We got a little bit of a glare today. <laughs> this is just funny. <laughs> Put that there. There we go. <laughs> this is different. <laughs> I don't know what to say because this is just weird. Now I gotta say that this thing does have this big back to it for your for a backrest, so you kind of just kind of lay up in it. And it's comfortable as comfortable as heck, actually. <laughs> it literally kind of like riding your your lounge chair here. Every I keep stomping my right foot like it's gonna do something. <laughs> ah, that takes a moment to get used to. This guy's got some pep to it for a 400. And the handlebars on these are super narrow. I mean, like, I'm very compact on this thing. Now these things don't weigh a ton or anything like that. And I mean, they are designed for urban cruising and comfort and longer rides as well. This particular thing is a 400cc. So that means it can actually get up there on the highway and enjoy life. We'll actually be doing that here momentarily. So we'll get to test out that idea. All right. This is so weird. <laughs> it's all experience. Do, 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 do. Boink. <laughs> That's just fun. Like I said, it's got a little park brake on it. It does have these handy little storage compartments there in the fairing too. Uh, your fuel's gonna go down in here. It's just kind of got some neat little storage capacities and stuff like that that most things wouldn't have, you know. That's pretty fun. It's so weird getting used to this position though. <laughs> But it's enjoyable. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this at all. <laughs> it's just different. 
And because you're sitting so narrow, I don't even, I mean, when the mirror's adjusted to where they can see the lane and everything, I don't even see myself in there because you're just so narrow. And the mirrors actually come out quite uh, wide. So now when it comes to the air protection, of course, there's nothing at all on my knees or legs or anything. There's really nothing there to, to talk about. And then uh, when it comes to it, the windshield isn't very tall. So I'm actually catching wind coming from this area right under the chin, um, basically. And it's kind of going around my helmet. So there's a lot of wind noise there with buffeting up top. So for somebody who's six foot tall, it, this one definitely gets you some wind noise while you're riding around. But you know, it's a motorcycle. There's going to be wind. Just a little louder than some. You know, it doesn't take too long to actually get used to this concept of the braking. All you gotta do is just feel it out, and then you'll realize how to work it. But first couple of turns, you're like, what is happening if you're not used to it? What I what I find so weird is not clutching right now. That's the weirdest thing for me, is not grabbing a fistful of clutch. Now on this thing you have very simple controls, your cut switch, your hazard switch, your start switch, your bright, your turn signal, push to cancel, your horn, and flash to pass on the back side there. So like I said, a little, little park brake, which that's actually what that says, says brake lock. So I finally got a chance to read that for you guys. And of course you got coolant, um, you got ABS, and you got your two turn signals and your service engine light. So up in the area now that the sun has gone away because of the clouds. You know, it is weird when you first take off. I've noticed this every time we've taken off so far. It takes a moment, you hear the engine spin up because it's got to spin those clutches and then it gets going. So you get, you get that to finally get going and it actually does pretty good at pulling away. But it just feels so awkward. <laughs> Now this particular motorcycle, or scooter, or whatever you want to call it, is very, very comfortable. I mean, I'm shocked. <laughs> Not balled up on it or anything like that. You, you literally, it, it literally is just like sitting and cutting a steak, I mean, at your kitchen table. It's just that, where everything is, you're just, your hands fall into that position. You're just, you're sitting here buttering bread, whatever. <laughs> It's so weird. But it's enjoyable. Now granted, I actually can see a tachometer this time. So, the tachometer on this bad boy is reading at 45 miles an hour. That we're doing around 4,300 RPMs. Now Suzuki's uh, got a little thing that says Eco there, indicating that we are riding this bike economically. Which, I don't know how that's economic. That's kind of high in the course of where it's at but hey you know if it's economical to the bike we're doing good right <laughs> being a 400 of course this is going to have really good really good fuel economy so this is perfect for just getting around town say you got to go around your college campus and go to go to work and do some things and go pick up some food and all that you got you got some places to put it and you got a comfortable ride suspension on it I'm probably a little bit too heavy for it. It's probably, it's a little undersprung for me. Definitely chatters in the front end and it bottoms out pretty quickly in the rear. But still, it rides really well. I'm surprised at how little plucky it is. Of course, when it comes to scooters, there's no rake. This thing is not stretched out at any means in the wheelbase or anything. This thing is pretty much just boop. <laughs> Still stomping my right foot down. Your muscle memory is real. <laughs> I'm surprised I'm not clicking my left foot to, to downshift either. That's the, that's the funnier part is I'm not clicking down to shift. But I am stomping that foot to break. Those little bugger turns really well, actually. And the little 400 has enough pluck to it that it's just able to, to 
catch up and stay with people and not too bad at all. Now we're doing 50 miles an hour, still in that eco mode as you can see, and we're around 5,000 RPM. Now your tachometer has a red line at around 8,500 on this one. Of course when we get on the highway we'll see what it does and how it shifts. Now there's not a lot of wind today so I can't comment on how the wind pushes the bike around or anything on the highway or on this road because there's just really no wind to speak of which for Oklahoma is a very rare event and treat so we might as well be happy with it. And braking is very adequate on it. Like I said the front brake stabs very hard of course that's probably because you're not used to modulating it when you're first doing that but when you modulate it right it works very well. And more comment on the suspension as we're on this little bit rougher road with the broken cracks in it. Definitely feel all of them. It's funny that the Van Van, which is a much lighter motorcycle and a much, you know, smaller motorcycle, is able to, to have a little bit better suspension on this. But then again, this one's a different kind of beast. It's not a true motorcycle, it's a scooter. It's different suspension setup, different way it sits, and much more compact, so there's not enough not as much room to put some suspension on there with longer travel and like I said part of it could be my weight is causing this to have a little difficulty not having any difficulty in engine though Alrighty. Do, 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 do. Let's take a look at the interstate here. I think it's just weird turning that way. I feel like I need to like shimmy things, but nothing's gonna come of it. <laughs> There's no tank here. <laughs> There's nothing to push on. You just kinda knees in the knees everywhere. Not in the brakes, just everywhere. <laughs> ah, it's funny. Alrighty, so here we are at highway speed, 70 miles an hour indicated. We are still showing that we're riding economically until I put a little bit of throttle input there. Uh, but we are pulling 6,500 RPMs of an 8,500 red line on a scooter in the middle of Oklahoma, so <laughs> that's funny. I'm actually completely surprised that this little bad boy can handle this perfectly. And you know, the engine and everything is very smooth actually. I mean, where my feet are, I can feel a little vibration coming through from the engine and I can feel a little bit from the handlebar, but other than that, this is a very smooth engine. And it does, its, it does very well. Still has decent pulling power. As you can see, I started closing in, even at the higher speed. So I still have closing power, still have passing power. That wind noise is incredibly louder now that I'm up the speed here. I can't get tucked in enough either to get away from it. No matter what, I'm still getting something. Mostly a lot of buffeting at the top of the helmet. Well, 
this thing is very admirable on the highway. Now because this thing is a scooter, you have all this room to put your feet in too. I normally have this complaint about my large size 14 feet, but all I have is room. It's kind of nice. You even have like these little highway pegs you could put up into like that. Look at that! <laughs> and it actually it actually helps streamline you a little bit better. This is this is just nice. So you could sit like in your easy boy or lazy boy or however you want to say it. Please don't copyright me. Or you can put your feet down. It doesn't matter. <laughs> this is this is just like I don't know, this is just too weird for me though. I, I prefer I definitely prefer my saddle seat. I definitely prefer riding with something there where I can lock my knees into and that way I can get a little bit more performance. It, it, it's just so weird to turn and your knees are kind of not going with you. <laughs> they go wherever they want. This is a blast though. And like I said, it, it, impeccable power to stay around with everybody. It's not, it's not that slow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Do -do -do. And it just turns, it's just so weird how this thing turns. It just feels weird to me. But like I said, it's because I don't have anything put my feet down on or you know or don't have anything to put my leg around basically <laughs> still want to put my foot on a brake every time oh I can stand up <laughs> all right So here's the thing, if you're wanting to get into motorcycles, you're wanting to get on two wheels, you want to get in the wind, do it in any way you can. Get a scooter, get one with an automatic, it don't matter. Get something that you can ride. And Suzuki provides that with the Bergman here for dang sure. It's a good little ride. It's the first time I've ever done a scooter at, you know, at anything that, that's on video. Like I said, I've rode Ruckuses, but they're so slow. I mean. You know, when you're on a ruckus, the maximum speed is 35 miles an hour-ish, and that's depending on how big your breakfast was that morning. So you might end up doing 28 because you had too many bean or too many breakfast burritos at that moment. I mean, the only time that you might be able to get a little bit faster is eat a bean burrito, stand up, and fire, and then you get a little bit faster. But other than that, this one is perfect. I mean, it handles traveling the city just fine. It has enough pulling power to stay with and get away from traffic with ease. The transmission is buttery smooth. I don't even realize it's working. The only time that I've noticed it's there is when you're sitting at a standstill and you gotta get spinning up for the first time to engage the clutches. And that's the first time you kind of feel it that, that it's working. Other than that, the rest of the time, there's no, there's no shuttering, there's no anything to, to tell you that there's something in there. It just works. And that's that's awesome. Like I said, first experience. I don't know how everybody else is, but this is pretty cool. And it's just so super comfortable. Like I said, you got that backrest to kind of back up on. You got a nice wide seat. You can put your feet up. You can put your feet down. You can put one foot up, one foot down. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's just it's just however you want to ride it. You kind of have you do have more options than you definitely do on a motorcycle. The, the, the part with your knees just kind of don't follow where you're going is the weird part to me. But at any rate, if you're looking for a scooter, if you're looking for something that's great for highway use, great for a long, long ride, that gets good gas mileage, great to get around town with, great to, you know, go around your, your college campus on, great to do whatever, this is the bike for you. This is the motorcycle, the scooter, whatever you want to call it for you. It is very lightweight. It's nice and small. You can put it anywhere. It's, it's just a great little ride. 
just a great little riding the machine. I, I mean, I don't really have any complaints, but wind noise and suspension. That's the only two things I got for you. So at any rate, this is the Rabbit Hedgehog. This is a 2019 Suzuki Bergman 400. If you have any more questions about it, put it in the comments below. We'll catch you on that next review and ride, folks. Ride safe, my friends.